like when I give up bottles in there. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about how you can better understand your baby's cues and signs when they're trying to communicate with you. Before we start, I just want to say and make very clear that I'm not claiming to be any baby expert actually i'm far from it but i do want to help any new mothers out there and i really think that by sharing experiences it really helps to learn being a parent is really one of those things that you only can read so much into it the hands-on experience is where you're going to learn the most so again sharing through experiences i think can help you the most i'm going to be sharing some of the signs and cues that leo gives me maybe if your baby makes the same cues it can help you pick up on them or maybe if you're looking for these cues you can actually pick up on whatever unique cues your baby does that way you can better start to communicate with them understand them and it can be easier to soothe or calm the baby. So let's get right into it. It all started right after giving birth to Leo where I realized I wasn't really paying attention to what he was doing and I just felt clueless. It really hit me hard when I was recovering in my room and a nurse came in to check up on me, one of the nurses that actually helped me deliver, and the baby was sleeping while she was talking to me and the baby started to make a kind of sucking motion with his mouth while he was sleeping and I had never noticed it before that until the nurse said oh it looks like he's hungry he's sucking with his mouth I know this might sound like common sense to some people but for me as a new mom it never occurred to me um, to check for that also because I was so tired and again new I didn't really notice until that moment and I remember just keeping track of the time, trying to feed the baby every two hours. That's how I was paying a, that's how. A lot of the time when you're feeding a newborn, really you're gonna have to wake them up to feed them because they can just sleep all day long. So I felt like such a failure in that moment. The nurse was just making an observation, but in my head I was already feeling like, wow, I didn't even pick up that when he was making that kind of lip sucking um, formation with his mouth that it was time to feed him. That's where it started where I realized that I really need to step my game up with paying attention. So that's one of the cues and signs. He'll either be sucking as if a bottle is in his mouth or he'll start sucking his tongue or he'll start sucking his bottom lip. And the baby's going to do this whether he's asleep or awake. So. This is why it's important that we look out for these cues because the baby can literally be like this with his hands very calm, sucking his bottom lip or sucking his tongue, trying to tell you that he's hungry and you want to feed them before they get frustrated and actually start crying, which is another cue. If your baby is playing with you, for example, and all of a sudden he goes from happy to fussy and annoyed and he starts crying high pitch, more often than not, he's probably hungry. If he's not hungry, he probably needs his diaper changed. Another cue that your baby might give you is putting their hands in their mouth. Now, babies regularly put their fingers in their mouth. Um, if it's good on their gums, they're also discovering their hands. But when Leo starts to shove his fist in his mouth, and I mean he tries to put the whole hand in his mouth, it's because he's hungry. It's because he's looking for comfort. So maybe your baby might be doing that. Maybe at one moment your baby is just sucking two or three fingers and the next moment they're trying to fit their whole fist in their mouth. Check the time, check to see if they're hungry. Another thing that I picked up while Leo was growing and getting bigger was that he needed to drink more milk. Again, something that's obvious but you don't pick up once you're getting into a routine and you're trying to find a comfortable place i was feeding leo for a certain amount of time waiting for him to um spit the nipple out when he was full and i thought okay if he doesn't want to drink anymore then he's done or if he falls asleep then he must be full no babies are gonna fall asleep while they're eating it's very soothing it's very comforting that doesn't necessarily mean that they're full this is why when i first started feeding leo i always timed how long he would eat so if he only ate five minutes i knew that wasn't enough i knew it had to go at least 10 or 15 minutes and sometimes what you have to do is just pick the baby up because the baby one 
needs some time for his little belly to kind of settle in order to drink more. Two, Leo cannot continue eating if, for example, his diaper was extremely dirty, which is completely understandable. Or two, if he had gas. So sometimes I would have to burp him and then put him back to feed. But in the beginning, I was feeding him and then burping him and getting ready to put him down. But while I was burping him, if he had burped already, he would start kind of banging his head on my chest. And I just thought, is he really frustrated? Why is he um, doing that? I kind of got worried like something was wrong with him. But really, what he was trying to do is he was looking for the boob again. And so as I started paying attention, I would burp him try to calm him and then put him on the other boob and he would eat and then once he was full and i would burp him again he would relax and then fall asleep maybe your baby might do that maybe you have to burp them and if you see them kind of banging and moving their head back and forth it's possible that your baby is still hungry so again if you're looking to see if whether your baby is still hungry you want to look out for fussiness look out for them putting their whole fist in their mouth look out for that sucking motion with their mouth sucking their lips sucking their tongue when it came to recognizing when leo needed to be burped and release gas one of the things that i noticed was that when i would feed leo and he was full and he would kind of move his head out the way he would relax for a second and then he would just start kind of getting really frantic and it was obvious that he had to be picked up so if you feed the baby and the baby is kind of laying in your arms and immediately starts crying, don't get overwhelmed, don't get worried. It's most likely that your baby has gas and because they're in a laying down position, you have to stand them upright so that they can have the ability to release it. Sometimes you pick the baby up immediately and the baby is going to burp right away. Sometimes you pick the baby up and it's so difficult for them to release the gas that maybe they'll start crying or shrieking or getting really fussy, but it's really because they need that extra help to burp. So what you want to do is, as you guys already probably know, you want to either pat them on the back or rub them in a very... Uh, what's the word? Applying a little bit of pressure, not too much, but just in a way that's actually going to help them push the gas out of their bodies. Um, so yeah, that's one of the ways. Another sign of gas is if you put your baby down and you've fed them, you've burped them, you've changed them and they fall asleep but they wake up in 10 or 15 minutes, most likely they're waking up because they still have some gas. So I know you might be tired, but don't get frustrated. Just pick them up, soothe them. Nine times out of 10, it is gas. You allow them to release it and they might look awake, but try putting them down again. This is probably going to be your opportunity to teach them to fall asleep on their own. Pay attention to how much the baby has burped because there always might be that little bit of trap gas that might be causing your baby pain. Now, if you want to look out for whether your baby is sleepy, there are your obvious cues and signs. One, your baby might start rubbing his eyes. Two, your baby might again get fussy. One of the big indicators that Leo started doing that took me a while to catch on to was I would have Leo on my chest after feeding and burping, trying to soothe him. And then all of a sudden he would start moving his head kind of quickly from side to side. And I thought, okay, maybe he's just really awake and he wants me to turn him around. He wants to see what's going on. And I just thought, oh my God, I'm trying to put him down to sleep. And he just wants to see everything in the room. But really, he was telling me that he was tired. He was telling me I'm ready to be put in my crib. And he was really just making a motion of trying to find a way to get comfortable to lay his head. So once I caught on, it was easy for me to recognize when he was ready to be put down when was a safe time to put him down because normally once he started doing that i already know he didn't have any gas so look out for that if your baby is moving their head side to side and you're trying to lay his head down to put him to sleep if he's moving it's probably because he's telling you okay i don't want to be put in this position i already know the crib is where i'm supposed to sleep 
please put me down. It works for me every single time. And then, of course, like I mentioned, if your baby is in the middle of playing or he was calm one moment and now he's getting fussy and he starts crying, it's possible that he's ready to sleep. What I did when I first brought Leo home is I kept a note in my phone and I would literally keep track of when I was feeding Leo and when he was going down. I was so tired and so just flustered by this new life change that I kept notes. I would literally write in my phone, okay, um, 2 o'clock to 2.15 fed Leo. That way I knew if four o'clock was coming around and he was getting fussy or crying, I knew, okay, it's time to feed him. Then I have to put him down for a nap. He's probably been up too long. So don't be afraid to keep notes. Keep notes in your phone or keep a notepad of the times you're feeding the baby, the naps the baby's taking, how mm -hmm. long they're napping. It's perfectly fine. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Your brain cannot function 100% if you're being sleep deprived. That really works for me and I really suggest that you guys keep track of it. It's gonna help you build a routine down the line and one day, once you get it, you're not gonna need to keep track anymore because you're gonna be able to pick up these cues like that. The last thing I wanna mention is a dirty diaper. You can obviously notice when the baby's diaper needs to be changed if he stinks or if you hear him fart or poop. But when he does those silent poops or when his diaper is just really wet because of pee, you're not gonna notice if it's quiet and if he is able to kind of sit for a while with it. It makes me so sad that babies have to depend and wait on us. One of the indicators is crying. If you fed your baby, if you burped your baby, if it's not time for your baby to take a nap, most likely your baby is crying for a clean tissue. So check the diaper. And a baby's way of communication is either through crying, which is probably 90% of the time, and 10%, they're trying to learn these cues that I mentioned. They're trying to talk to you by how they move their head, how they're shaping their mouth, and even sometimes what they're doing with their hands. So look out for those things. Your baby is always trying to communicate to you. I know it's a lot to learn. I know it can be overwhelming, but be patient, you'll get there. Again, this is what my baby does. I'm not saying this is what your baby's gonna do. They might do the same thing, or they might do something similar, or they might do something completely unique. But I hope that in sharing this, this can help you look out for those cues a little more and better help you communicate and understand your baby. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give this video a like. Please Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what are some of the things your baby does that gives you cues as to what they need. I love to hear different stories and different experiences from different moms. And make sure that you're subscribed for all future upcoming videos. And I'll see you in the next one.